and welcome to the Audio File Baristas weekly vlog number 93 where I talk about coffee, audio and other things that keep me busy and last week I did a little experiment with you guys about recording my sound and well let's look what happened so first of all I want to thank everybody who gave a comment it's very helpful but the differences in comments are so big that I'm not really sure what to think of it so here someone says that he's happy that I'm playing some music and he says it sounds very nice via the iPad another comment says I love those Ocelia's great great sound so that's positive. Then somebody says, well, it didn't seem to be the greatest microphone, but that's not the speaker's fault. I know it did not sound the way that I experienced my sound in my listening room. Here somebody says, I'm not sure if it worked. I feel I'm hearing the room too much. That could well be possible. And he is suggesting a binaural setup. Well, I would love that, but I don't have the funds to do so. And here someone says, fantastic speakers. Fantastic music and coffee, does it get any better? No, it doesn't. And here someone says, I think from what I, what I hear, I can tell that your system sounds very warm and organic. Sounds very good, open and big. Those speakers are amazing. And then I have somebody saying, sorry, it sounds nothing to talk about. Here somebody says, the microphone does give a good impression, but I'm sure it can be done better. And somebody says, it, should be better it sounds a little bit boxy and lifeless through my audio setup so oh and here's one more just use a smartphone works for me so all in all i got a lot of different comments ranging from this is not worth talking about to great great sound so let's go back to the vlog because i think i need some coffee here you can see the coffee that we just made let me make sure that this is all in focus this is a nice little variant on a mocha pot so as you saw you put water in the bottom you put coffee between you heat up the water it will go through the coffee down to up to this little pipe and then it will end up inside your cup giving you a pretty strong full-bodied cup of coffee maybe too strong for some people very much depending on how much coffee you put in there how fine or coarse your grind is if you want to you can add a little water making it sort of an americano and mocha pots of course i've shown you before here you have a variant of it 
water goes in the bottom, in the middle of coffee, and the coffee gets collected on top. And these cups were gifted to me by a friend, one of you, the subscribers, who invited me at their home. Have a little listen at this system. There's a video coming out on that one somewhere soon. I'm not making any promises about when I put out a video anymore because I have to combine it with the work that I, that I do and every week is different. So it's a very unpredictable schedule. So I'm not making any more promises, but I think this little mocha pot, which was gifted also to me, I think this is just a wonderful thing. Very neatly, this little plateau where you put your cups, when the water is heating, that, because it's all metal, this is stainless steel, by the way, not aluminium, this little plate is also heating up, making it also a cup warmer, and then you can fill two cups at the same time. I like this thing. I think this looks beautiful, and I enjoy making coffee with that one. So that is the coffee that I'm drinking today. Now, let's have a look outside. It's a beautiful day. We have had a few days without rain. Nice blue skies. And the temperature is okay. Oh, you see I live on the top floor and sometimes just above me birds are sitting on the side of the building and when they fly down they go in front of the of the window which is very nice so there's something i want to show you downstairs so let's go downstairs Okay, so let's put on some lights down here. Where's my little... So there's one... Let's turn it on. Come on. Yeah, there you go. So that is one. Over here I have some connectors which are for that light. And I have a big light on top that I can turn on. There it is, and there is a light over here. Let's turn that one on. Also, having a little bit of a better view of what's happening here, because I've told you, I've told you that I was busy selling these Q acoustics. And if all goes well, next Saturday, so tomorrow in this case, somebody will be here to pick them up let's see if they actually come and if yes i will have a little bit more budget to try and find some different stuff that could be interesting for you guys for now i just want to give you a last look of the q acoustic loudspeakers with this stand the stand actually is for a smaller model that is below here and that one is are the monitors that I use at my computer at the moment um, so this is what I have over here these are nice little speakers but they just don't deliver the sound that I like so time to sell them and go on the lookout for something new. Let's go back up again. So last week I showed you my thrift store scores and this week I actually, because you can now in the Netherlands you can reserve some time to shop in a store so they control the amount of people that are in the store. We're not completely open yet, but if you reserve online, you can have a half an hour or an hour to do your shopping. So I booked another hour to go to the thrift store. By the way, the thrift store is just right behind those trees. So pretty close. And this is what I got. 
Okay, so what you see here is my work setup. I just had a meeting this morning, having one laptop to do the conference call and having another one, in this case a Chromebook, to check out all the things that I want to check out while doing the call. Okay, so just a little stack this time. And the reason for that is that I found a lot more but lately what I'm doing is much more checking the quality of the CDs and in this case most of the CDs it, I don't know what people do with that but they looked so scratched that I thought well I'm not going to even bother with them but I had some very interesting things that I uh, that I found let's start with this one this is a recording from Sibelius and the interesting part here is the SBM, the super bit mapping technology that they used. Of course, when this came out, they really did a big job on um, advertising, getting digital better. Of course, we had step by step by step to improve digital and now we're at high resolution, stuff like that. But this is pretty old, as you can see over here. I don't know if you can see that. But it says F2995. So when this came out, I believe somewhere in 95, 1995, it was 2995 guilders because that was the Dutch currency that we uh, use. And the reason that it says F29 instead of G from guilders uh, 29 is because before we used guilders, we used Florence. I don't know if that is the correct way to pronounce it. Florijnen, that's what we call it in the Netherlands. And we kept the F. So I listened to this one uh, yesterday. And actually this recording is very nice. And I don't know if it's due to the super bit mapping technology, but the sound was very sweet, very luscious. And I enjoyed this very much. So that's one that I picked up. And as you can see, 75 cents. I'm not leaving a super bit mapping CD with classical music. I'll take it for 75 cents. Okay, so here we have some Bobby McFerrin. This is paper music. And as you can see, conductor and vocalist. That's what it says. This means that Bobby McFerrin, of course, the guy from Don't Worry, Be Happy, but later on in his career, he became very much into classical music. And now he combines his vocal talent with classical music. And he even became a very competent director, classical director. So this one was a little bit scratched, more scratched the CD itself than I would like. But I did not have this one in the collection. And I have a lot of Bobby McFerrin, but I needed this one still in the collection. I believe I have to turn down the lighting a little bit and as you can see here probably the theme of today is that this is also super bit mapping and even though there were a lot of stretches on there this one played really really nice okay so here's an interesting thing this is Linda Ronstadt Mas Canciones People, of course, know Linda Ronstadt. Some people may not know that she has roots that involved Mexican songs. And she lived in Mexico or in the neighborhood. I can't remember exactly, but I saw a documentary of uh, Linda Ronstadt recently. It was a very good documentary. And the interesting thing was that along her career, she did not just want to sing what the record company thought would sell good, but she also wanted to sing what she wanted to sing. And one of the things that she wanted to do was to have the, the songs from her youth, which were all in Mexican voice. Uh, and if this is not Mexican, correct me in the, in, the, in the comments below. And she made a whole CD. So that's what I heard in that documentary, which we watched maybe a month ago, something like that. And what do you know? I'm looking through the CDs in the thrift store and there it is for 75 cents. So that's in the collection as well. So I listened to it yesterday and if you like this music, this is pretty well recorded. Give it a listen. Okay, here we have a classic that everybody knows, of course, 
dire straits, money for nothing. And I listened to this one yesterday and this also sounds pretty nice. This was also 75 or 95 cents. So, and I did not have that in the Dire Straits collection. Not the biggest Dire Straits fan, but for those kind of prices, I really like to make, to get all the CDs of some artists. So very happy with that one. Here we have some more classical music, Mozart. This is a recording by Deutsche Grammophon. Most of the time their recordings are pretty good, but there is a possibility every now and then that they sound a little bit thin, is I think the word I should, I should use. And this is one of them, something I don't like in opera. But hey, it's Mozart and it was 50 cents, so perfect. And then I ran into this little thing. James Bond, the James Bond collection. This is a four CD set, which is when you open it, you'll be greeted with the first one. It will give you four CDs, of course. So here we have number one, number two, number three, and somehow they don't continue their design on number four, but anyways, well here you can see all the who produced it and, and, and stuff like that. And at the rear you see all the information of all the songs that are on there. So this was, what did I pay for that? I believe this was 95 cents. So you have a nice box that you can put it in, you have all the songs that you see there, nothing fancy. This was not a fancy edition when it came out, you can still buy it, <clears throat> it's not too expensive, I believe it's still on sale for 13 euros and I paid 95. So I'm very happy with that one, the James Bond collection, to add that to the collection. And recently, especially because of the prices, uh, in the thrift stores, I started to collect a lot more of the soundtrack CDs because those are mostly very well recorded. Most of the time, cinematic music, soundtracks sound much fuller and bigger and wider. So that's why th this is interesting. And then, you know, James Bond, I recently bought a James Bond, well, let me show you. This is what I picked up on Craigslist. This is all the James Bond movies and all on Blu-ray. Very happy with this edition. I like the, the artwork on it, very minimalistic. I like that. You can choose to have this side on front with this uh, letters, the James Bond logo or the James Bond collection, or you can even go more minimalistic. So if I, op if I open up this one, ah, well, I, I was playing James Bond two days ago, so not all the boxes are in here, but what they give you is a few of these boxes. It will tell you on the sides what years they are from, they are covering, and if you open them up, not too fancy, not a lot of informational booklets, stuff like that, just all the different Blu-rays in one nice sturdy box, giving you the opportunity to watch all of them. And all the boxes are the same, no are no uh, booklets, just the discs. But you just got get all of them. All right, if you look at the back, all they give you is the names, the titles of the different movies, and that's it. A little bit of information down here that is required, but yeah, that's actually it. And you know what? I like this minimalistic style. I like it when 
boxes are very luxurious but I also like it when it is just the basics and nothing else so and now we have the soundtrack also so I'm very happy with that okay so this is my thrift store score for today let's finish off the video okay pick the camera off of the tripod here we have our my beautiful view today I'm going to finish off I'm going to think about trying to record my system with this camera the microphone again with my telephone and see if this is happening but for now I think my first response is to not have a sound sample sample video up anytime soon because the differences in how this is perceived are well they are crazy big so I have to think about what I'm going to do with that but for today I thank you for watching and I'll see you next week